virtuous wife, or the King James says woman, for her worth is far above rubies. The heart of her husband safely trusts her. How many understand trust is very important in a marriage? The heart of her husband safely trusts her, so he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil. Now think about this. I want you to listen to these words. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and willingly works with her hands. She is like the merchant ships. She brings her fruit, food from afar. She also rises while it is yet night, provides food for her household, and a portion for her hand or for her maidservants. She considers a field and buys it. From her profits, she plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and strengthens her arms. She perceives that her merchandise is good and her lamp does not go out by night. She stretches out her hands to the distaff and her hand holds the spindle. She extends her hand to the poor. Yes, she reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household is clothed with scarlet. She makes tapestry for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates. When he sits among the elders of the land, she makes linen garments and sells them and supplies sashes for the merchants. Strength and honor are her clothing. Think about that. Strength and honor are her clothing. She will rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom. Not criticism, but wisdom. And on her tongue is the law of kindness. She watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. In other words, she's not lazy. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Now I want you to listen to verse 30, very important. Charm. Everybody say charm. Charm is what? Charm is deceitful, and beauty is passing. But a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you. For this is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we thank you for this day that we call Mother's Day. Lord, that we have set aside to honor our mothers. And Father, I just speak a special blessing over every home, every household that's represented here today. And Lord, now as we come to this most sacred time, as we open up the bread of life, Father, I pray that your anointing would fall upon us, Lord, that a corporate anointing would be released upon this body of believers, that you would anoint me to speak, preach, and teach what does say the Lord. And Lord, anoint our ears to hear and our hearts to receive. May the word of God fall on good ground this morning. May we not be hearers only, but may we become doers of your word. Father, we thank you for protecting us and keeping us safe another week. We thank you for what you've done, what you're doing, and what you're about to do here this morning. We give you all the praise and honor and glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. And amen. Now, once again, verse 10 of our opening text here says this. Who can find a virtuous wife or woman for her worth? Everybody say, for her worth. For her worth is far above rubies. The title of the message this morning is this. The worth of a woman. The worth of a woman. Let's watch this together. Okay. 
Moms have it so easy. I mean, their lives are fun, simple, and, and so rewarding. Sometimes I wish, instead of being the dad, I, I wish I was the mom. Ah, oh, another day of pedicures, reading my magazines, and making myself beautiful. This is the life. Mom? Mom, tell him to stop copying me. Mom, tell him to stop copying me. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. Mom, do something. Mom, do something. Are you serious? Are you serious? Mom, are you serious? Why did I ever ask you to help me? I should have known you couldn't fix my hair. I look like a freak. Look at me. Look at me. Hey, Mom, look at this. Look at me. Come on, Mom. Look at me. Watch this, Mom. Come on. Look at this. Watch this. Come on, look at me. Come on, Mom. Look at me. Come on, Mom. Look at me. Come on. report due tomorrow and I haven't read any of this. Mom, if you don't help me, I'm going to fail school and be a loser forever. You don't expect me to read this all by myself, do you? You don't expect me to eat this, do you? Seriously, Mom, what is this? Mom, I'm not going to eat this. Dad, can we just go out to eat, please? Hey, kids, be nice to your mother. If I eat this, I'm going to throw up. Mom, I said I'm going to throw up. No. Mom, I think I'm going to be sick too. You're amazing. No, seriously. I don't know how you do it. I, I'm at a loss for words. Kids, come here. Get in here. Hug your mother. Tell her you love her. We're in the presence of greatness. Dad. Not now. Dad's on a roll. This is God's greatest creation, kids. You're smushing my face. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And I'm sorry. Because I don't say thank you enough. I mean, the truth is... I don't deserve you. Gives us some very sound advice here in 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Paul says, Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? So all you single men, I would say choose wisely. Choose wisely. Finding not only a wife, but finding a good wife is like finding a treasure. How many husbands would say amen this morning? Man, you just missed a good place to say amen. Come on, men, you're going to have to work with me here. Your wife's here, so amen. My wife is a treasure to me. I said, my wife is a treasure to me. She's valuable to me as a man, as a husband, as a father, as a pastor. Hello? She's also my secret weapon. She knows a lot more than what she lets on. Without her, I could not be doing what I'm doing. Hello? We're a team. And that's the way God meant for husbands and wives to be. Not only to be one, but to be a team. To have each other's back. When the other, where the other person is weak, you've got to be strong for them and vice versa. 
Look at your spouse this morning and tell them we're a team. We're talking about the worth of a woman, but not just any woman, a good woman, a God-fearing woman, a wife who loves and serves the Lord. I was talking to some young folks the other night after the service and I was talking about the fact that God has to be in number one place in our lives. We have to love God first and foremost above anybody. In fact, we have to love God more than we love our spouses, more than we love our children. And I said this, I promise you that my wife wants me to have God in first place in my life because if I don't, she don't want to live with me. Come on, somebody. Hello? Come on, just keep it real. Don't act holy now. Don't be acting holy. If God is not in first place of our lives, then you know what? We're just a mess. We're just an accident waiting to happen. We're talking about the worth of a woman, a God-fearing woman, a wife who loves and serves the Lord, a wife and a mother who loves and serves her family. So here for a few minutes today, I want to talk to you about motherhood. Everybody say motherhood. Obviously, I'm not an expert on motherhood. I haven't even got the father thing down yet. But I tell you what, I've been around for a little while, and I think we can take some advice from the Word of God, and I think we can learn some things. How many would say amen? Now, like I said earlier, I kind of had a, some difficulty this week deciding on which way to go here today. In fact, I, I had a hard time deciding on which title to go with. And those of you who have, who have heard me preach, you know that I always get the title before I get anything else. So as we get into the message here today, I want to share quickly with you the titles uh, that came to me and I was trying to choose from. And maybe it would give us a little bit better direction of where we're going here today. First of all, title number one could have been or would have been this, the lost, hello, or there was title number two, mothers are children too, mothers are children too, how many understand that all mothers need cared for and loved as well, or how about this, title number three, the heart of a mother comes from her father, her heavenly father that is. Hello? So I don't know, maybe next year I'll just kind of keep those and we'll use one of those. But today we have decided on the worth of a woman. The worth of a woman. Because the Bible declares her worth is far above rubies. In other words, it's valuable. Everybody say she's valuable. So mothers, we honor you here today on this second Sunday of May. A day that has been set aside to honor all mothers. Now, Pastor Josh has already stole my thunder. I was going to use that line. If it wasn't for your mother, you wouldn't be here today. But that's true, isn't it? How many understand that Eve's name, how many remember Adam, Adam and Eve way back in the Garden of Eden? Eve's name actually means the mother of all living. So yes, if it wasn't for our mom, we wouldn't be here. But quickly, I, I want us to talk about the lost art of motherhood. First of all, mothers, you have a very difficult job, just like was portrayed on the screen here this morning. You have a lot on your plate. And I'm not going to stand up here today and try to tell you how to do your job. I've got my hands full trying to be a husband, a father, and a pastor, and so on. But being a wife and a mother is a full-time job. I said it's a full-time job. It's something that you just don't turn on or turn off or put on and take off. But it's a full-time job. And oftentimes it's very demanding. There's long hours, very low pay, except for the new vacuum that you get every once in a while, just to do more work. <laughs> Name brand. A thankless kind of job, isn't it? 
But let me say this, ladies. You are not housewives, but you are homemakers. I said you're not housewives, but you're homemakers. Now, over the last few decades, many things have changed in our world. How many would say amen? Many things have changed with the roles of fathers, husbands, wives, and mothers. Many things have changed, and many of them not for the better. How many would say amen? (laughs) Sometimes it seems like most of them not for the better. But now, ladies, I am in no way, shape, or form a male chauvinist. I'm not trying to hold you down whatsoever. I don't believe that you have to be barefoot and pregnant and staying at home to be in God's will. But on the other hand... There's nothing wrong with that either. Hello? I said there's nothing wrong with that either. Let's look here real quickly at how things have changed over the years. How many realize things have changed in our life? Watch this little video clip if you would, please. You're sure to get a chuckle out of this, I'm sure. to Beaver, starring Barbara Bellingsley. Some of you young people don't even know what this is. Hugh Beaumont. Tony Dow. And Jerry Mathers as the Beaver. Yes. Honey, what's funny? Well, whenever we cook inside, Mom always says to cook it. But whenever we cook outside, you always do it. How come? Well, it's sort of traditional, I guess. Uh, You know, they say a woman's place is in the home, and uh, I suppose as long as she's in the home, she might as well be in the kitchen. Oh. Well, that explains about Mom. But how come you always do the outside cooking? Well, I'll tell you, son. uh, Women do all right when they have all the modern conveniences. But us men are better at this uh, rugged type of outdoor cooking. Sort of a throwback to caveman days. Hand me those asbestos gloves, will you, Molly? Girls are kind of lucky, don't they, Mom? Why do you say that? Well, they don't have to be smart. They don't have to get jobs or anything. All they got to do is get married. (laughs) Well, Beaver, being smart isn't exactly a drawback to marriage. Well, if they don't get married... They can become dressmakers or cut people's nails in a barber shop or take care of kids and a lot of other dumb stuff. <laughs> well, Beaver, today girls can be doctors and lawyers, too, you know. They're just as ambitious as boys are. You mean there's no dumb people left in the world, Mom? <laughs> Beaver, is there something bothering you? Well, kind of, Mom. We're having an intelligence test tomorrow in school, and I don't know if I'm going to pass it. Oh, Beaver. Beaver, of course you will. Your father did very well in school. And I got good grades. You had a grandfather that was a professor. Why, he was considered practically a genius. Yeah, it's nice having all that smart stuff in the family, Mom. I just hope it didn't all get worn out before it came to me. (laughs) All right, let's show our age here. How many have never seen that before? Raise your hand. Raise your hand, girls. I know you've never seen that before. All right, so that's, that's not too bad, I guess. The good old days. How many would like to go back to the good old days? Sometimes I think yes, sometimes I think no. <laughs> there isn't anyone in the world who has more influence over their children than a mother. I want you to think about that. There isn't anyone in the world who has more influence over their children than a mother. A mother shapes, molds, and makes her children into what they become. The heart of a mother comes from her father, her heavenly father. 
How many have ever heard the little saying, he's got a face only a mother could love? (laughs) Why is that? It's because mothers get their love from their heavenly father. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7 verse 11, If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how many love to bless your children? Sure we do. How much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? God loves to bless his children just as a mother loves to bless her own children. So we honor our mothers. We honor our parents. Not just because it's a nice thing to do, but the Bible actually commands us to do so. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 3. Listen to this. Children, obey. Everybody say obey. Obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Honor. Everybody say honor. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you, and you may live long on the earth. So perhaps could we take this this morning and say those who are up in age this morning, we can presume that you obeyed your mother and your father. Amen? This is it, the first commandment with a promise and a pretty good reason to obey and honor our parents. How many would say amen? Now, I was also thinking about talking about mothers of miracles in the Bible. And I'm just going to kind of jump around here in this message, so just bear with me. I was wanting to talk about mothers of miracles, but how many understand that every mother who bears a child is a mother of a miracle? Think about that. Every mother who bears a child is a mother of a miracle. Because you see, the gift of life is the greatest miracle ever given to mankind. You say, well, it has to be the gift of salvation. But listen, salvation is not even in play if we're not born. Hello? So we've got to get things in order. The gift of life is the greatest miracle ever given to mankind. And these things we call life, blessings, man, woman, husband, wife, and family, how many understand they were all God's ideal? Hello? God ordained the family in the Garden of Eden. Let's look at it quickly here in Genesis chapter 1. Verse 26, then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. How many know the devil is the biggest creep of all? And we've got power, dominion, and authority over him. Amen? Verse 27, so God created man in his own image. Think about that. You're not an accident going somewhere to happen. The Bible goes on to say that we're fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. Do we need to stop there? Male and female. Let me just say this. There's no accidents with God. If you're a man, you're a man. If you're a female, you're a female. Enough said about that. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So we see that this was God's will or his divine order from the very beginning. It was God's will for mankind from Day one. But how many understand that the devil likes to come along and he likes to mess up God's plan? He likes to uh, cause confusion. You see, that's why the devil hates the family unit so much. Because it was God's idea from the very beginning. Amen? 
Ladies, let me just say this. The devil doesn't want you to be a godly wife. He doesn't want you to be a godly mother. And men, the devil doesn't want you to be a godly husband and a godly father. Now think about that. Think about that. But God himself seen that it wasn't good for man to be alone. Let's look at that quickly in Genesis chapter 2. And I'm so thankful for this passage right here. Genesis chapter 2 verse 40, 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Notice here, when God created Eve, he didn't take a bone from Adam's head that Eve should lord over him, nor did he take a bone from Adam's foot that he should lord over her. But rather, the Lord took a rib from Adam's side, close to his heart, that Eve could enjoy life next to her husband. He who finds a wife finds a good thing. But he who finds a godly wife finds something even better. We're talking about the worth of a woman. Ladies, how many understand that we live in a society where, and we don't even realize it, but it's the enemy working through society. It's the enemy working through media and advertisement. But we live in a day and age where society tells us you have to be all this to be worth something. You have to look like this. You have to be the perfect weight. You have to wear this. How many understand that is a lie from the very pits of hell? Amen. Honey, God has made you the way you are. And with God, there are no accidents. So you don't need improvements. You don't need what all the world tells you you think you need. Come on, somebody. Now, this is some good preaching this morning. You just need to be happy and content who God has called you to be. Whew. And once you get that revelation, it's very liberating. Because you just, you're just happy. You're just content with who God has called you to be. Look at your neighbor and say, if you don't like me, take it up with him. God made me the way I am. He made my face nice and fat and round. He made my ears to stick out. He made my nose to be crooked. Come on, somebody. Let's just keep it real. Hello? Let's just be happy with who we are, who God has made us to be. I'm talking about the worth of a woman. But when we talk about mothers of miracles, I think about how Sarah gave birth to Isaac at such an old age when it was seemingly impossible. Or how even Mary gave birth to baby Jesus. How many understand that mothers are makers of miracles? Mothers are doing miracles all the time. Isn't it amazing how would we, we would fall as children and we would skin up our knee or our elbow and mom would just come and kiss it and poof! Make it all but better. Why? Because... Moms are miracle workers. And speaking of mothers, I, I love the story in the Bible about these two soon-to-be mothers. Let's look at it here in Luke chapter 1. And I know I'm all over the page this morning, but just bear with me. We're just trying to hit on a bunch of stuff this morning. I didn't know what to leave out, so I didn't leave anything out. Luke chapter 1, verse 39. Now Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste to see 
to a city of Judah and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. And it happened. Everybody say, and it happened. A God thing happened. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Woo! Now, how many know who that baby was in, a, in Elizabeth's belly? It was John the Baptist. Woo! I could just hear John saying, Woo! I think that's the voice of the mother of my Lord right there. Then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. <laughs> what an awesome Holy Ghost meeting between two soon to be mothers. Or how about Hannah, who prayed that she might have a child? Let's look at that quickly in First Samuel. First Samuel chapter 1, verse 27. For this child I prayed, and the Lord has granted me my petition, which I asked of him. Now let me just say this, ladies. If you are praying and believing God for a child, and the Lord hasn't given you one yet, don't give up. How many understand that Abraham and Sarah had to wait a long time, and Sarah came up with a real bad idea when he invited Abraham to go see Hagar, was that her name? So be patient. For this child I prayed, and the Lord has granted me my petition, which I asked of him. Therefore I also have, have lent him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he shall be lent to the Lord. So they worshiped the Lord there. I love how the Bible shows us the value of our children. Amen? The Bible says that children are a heritage of the Lord. That they are like arrows in a warrior's hand. And how true I have found that to be. Can I be real with you this morning? Can I be honest? I'm going to go ahead and be honest anyhow. I don't care if you say yes or no. I'm just, just making you feel like you're part. <laughs> Making you feel a little better. But uh, I'm going to be truthful with you. Probably about 14 years ago now, I felt that I could have possibly been, been missing God. How many have ever been there and done that? Been in this church since I was eight years old. I knew the call of God was upon me, but I felt I was missing it. How many have ever been there and done that? Thought you missed God. Thought you missed His timing. Some things were said and done. Some things were said and done by a certain individual who we trusted and looked up to and who should have known better. Kind of added insult to injury. But anyway, that's a long story. And so I was about 30 years old, and I thought, okay, Jesus was 30 when He started His many ministry. I'm ready to start my ministry. And so a few years went on, and I thought possibly I had missed God's timing in our life. I know we had looked to move on, to do some other things, even leave town, but God never did open that door. He never did allow that to happen. And now in hindsight, looking on as we have been pastoring now here for three years, I see that I wasn't ready. It was not God's timing but now. Everybody say, but now. You see, God knows exactly what we need and exactly when we need it. And my children, not only my wife, but my children are such a vital part of not only this church, but of my ministry. There's so many behind-the-scenes things that they do. Jordan does my scriptures every week. Uh, Jared is my right-hand man. I just call him up, text him, and boom, he's on it. Has all the little video clips ready. Makes his dad look good. Somebody say, thank God for the kids. <laughs> the Bible shows us the value of our children. And without my wife, 
without my children, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing today. So mothers, please don't ever underestimate the value of your worth. The worth that you are to your husband. The worth that you are to your children. Because you see, it's a very high calling to be a mother. Mothers are so important, just as fathers are. Because as the family goes, so goes the church. How many understand the church can't be strong if we as individuals and as we as families aren't strong? As the family goes, so goes the church. And as the church goes, so goes the nation. Today it's sad to say, but many women have traded their motherhood in for so many things. An education, a career, a bigger house, a new car. But ladies, can I tell you this? Nothing can fulfill a woman like motherhood. I said nothing can fulfill a woman like motherhood. Nothing defines a woman like motherhood. Nothing describes a mother like her children. A mother's children describe what kind of mother she was. Hello? I said a mother's children describes what kind of mother she was. No one else can take the place of a God-fearing mother. No one can influence a husband the way his wife can. No one can influence children the way their mother can. So ladies, please, don't devalue, don't negate your powerful role and the awesome responsibility you have as a wife and a mother. You see, the devil will lie to you and he will tell you that you have to look like this and you have to have all that to be happy, but it's a lie. It's a lie. Because when you get all this, and then when you acquire all this, at the end of the day, you're going to realize that doesn't even really make you happy anyhow. It's the little things in life that mean the most. So don't devalue, don't negate your powerful role in your family. And yes, you really can make or break your husband. You were that important, you were that vital to your family. You say, but pastor, my husband is weak. He's not a leader. He won't step up and de- ah, I realize that. I know that's the male story time and time again today. But you know what? You step up and you be who God has called you to be. And you put your husband on the altar and you let God deal with your husband. Come on. You be the example to your husband. You pray that God gets a hold of your husband. Amen. I love to say what the, word of, what the Word of God has to say, rather, about one of the miracle mothers in the Bible. And this is in reference to Mary, the mother of Jesus. Look at this in Luke chapter 1, verse 28. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Wow. Wow. In closing, I want to go back to our opening text. It's found here in Proverbs chapter 31. Remember, we're talking about the great worth of a woman. Praise team, you can come on up. Proverbs 31, verse 10. Who can find a virtuous wife or woman? For her worth is far above rubies. Today we would say diamonds or a million dollars. It's priceless. You can't put a price tag on a virtuous wife, a virtuous woman. Husbands, let me say this. If you have a good wife, 
make sure you praise her today. Children, if you have a good mother, make sure you praise her today. And ladies, even if you are not married, or even if you don't have any children, we honor you today as well. Amen? Some of the ladies with no children of their own oftentimes turn out to be some of the greatest spiritual mothers. And so I would say this. If you don't have any natural children of your own, know that God is calling you to be a spiritual mother in the household of faith. And God wants to give you many, many children. Amen. So we honor all you ladies today. We honor our wives. We honor our mothers. Please stand with me if you would, please.